Hi, in this video we will discuss brief about the multiple different methods that we have to uh, maintain the security of our AI services. So, we all know we are going to consume AI services into our application and we are going to use the AI capabilities to build our smart intelligent applications. So, it becomes very important that we ensure that our AI services are secured because you will be transforming your data uh, onto AI services or you might be receiving data. So, there can be the possibilities that your AI services gets compromised. So, in order to make sure that your AI services are secured, we need to know what are the different methods that you can use to uh, ensure that these services remain secured. Now, we have got certain authentication methods. We have got a network security method to safeguard your Azure AI services. So, let's look at the authentication methods that we have. So, now we already know that access to the uh, Azure AI services is restricted by using subscription keys. So, it becomes very important that these keys are secured enough and manage, managing these keys is primary for maintaining the security of your AI services, right? So, there are certain methods. So, first one is regenerate keys. So basically, uh, as you all know that Azure AI services provides two keys, right? So you can generate these keys or you can regenerate these keys without any service interruptions. So using this method of regenerating keys, you can ensure that your keys are always uh, renewed, right? So uh, it will uh, decrease the threat that your if in case your keys are stolen and your as your AI service will be accessed by an authorized party. So, so how you can do that? How you can make sure that your service is not interrupted and you are able to regenerate your keys? So, so this is the way uh, you can uh, regenerate your keys. First, you should point all your production application to use key 1 and then you can go ahead and regenerate your key 2 because this is free now. No, no application is using this key. Once you have regenerated your key 2, point all your production application to use key 2. So, now your key 1 becomes free, right? And then you can go ahead and regenerate key 1. So, second key is regenerated and first key is regenerated. So, once your key 1 is regenerated, switch back all your production application to use new key 1. So, this way you have ensured that your keys are regenerated and service has not been interrupted. So, this is how you can make sure that your keys are always renewed. Now, another method to protect your keys is using Azure Key Vault. So, Azure Key Vault is a service provided by Azure to store secrets. Basically, uh, secrets like passwords or keys you can store and then you can fetch those secrets by accessing it via security principles. So, this is a method that it uses wherein you create a managed identity for your application. And using that managed identity only, you will be given access onto Azure Key Vault. So, directly your application will not be communicating with Key Vault or not be uh, getting authenticated with Key Vault. You will be assigning a managed identity to your application and using that managed, managed identity uh, will be accessing the Key Vault. And then you will be able to fetch the secrets. So, this way you minimize the risk to your secrets. And you need not store your secrets in your configuration file or you need not hard code in your code. So, that way you ensure that your keys are stored in a secured uh, location. So, this is about how you can store your keys uh, in some secured location. Another option is token based authentication. So, in this case, your AI application or your AI services will be accessed using a token. So, when your application is uh, trying to access AI service, it 
will be uh, asked to obtain an authentication token initially by using the subscription key and then uh, in next request in subsequent request your application must provide this authentication token to validate that the caller has been authenticated so this token will remain valid for some 10 minutes and once the token is expired then you will have to regenerate the token again so this way you are making sure that you are not passing your subscription key over the network again and again and you are only accessing it via authentication token which actually gets expired after certain time so this is another method of accessing your ai service and then you have got Microsoft Entra ID authentication. So this is uh, works on the principle called service principles. So you create a uh, managed identity. It can be either system assigned or user assigned. So access will be granted to these identities. So system assigned identity if only you want your single service to access your AI services. Let's say if you want your virtual machine. Uh, uh, to only have access to your AI service then you can assign a system assigned identity to that particular virtual machine and you can access uh, only via that virtual machine onto your Azure AI service but when it comes to user assigned managed identity you uh, make, make use of this kind of managed identity when you want multiple uh, 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 applications to be able to access onto your Azure AI service. So this is another method where you use make use of service principles and managed identity. So these are all the ways with which you can uh, you know create one extra layer while you are accessing your Azure AI services. Now very important when it comes to network security. So no matter what, uh, like you have safeguarded your subscription keys, you have put uh, another layer of security. But when it comes to network security, this is important because by implementing network security, you are limiting what users can see, which users can see. So that way you are making sure that your service is not on, on, author, I mean, accessed by unauthorized users. Right? And then they you, then service will not be compromised when only authorized users are able to access. So what you can do, you can restrict the access by using specific network addresses. Either you can configure public internet address, specific public internet address or any virtual networks. So once you have configured these access network access, uh, addresses, then you are ensuring that only the clients who are trying to connect from these IP addresses will be allowed to access the API. APIs uh, which are exposed by Azure AI services. Others will not be allowed and they will receive access denied error. So this is how you can enable network restrictions and uh, uh, ensure that only users whom you want to access from specific networks only will be able to access your Azure AI services. So in this video, I just wanted to give you brief about the different ways uh, to safeguard your AI services. We will see in detail in the labs how to implement these methods. Thank you.